Hi, welcome back to Geometry. This is section 6.6. .6. We're still in chapter 6. We learned all about quadrilaterals, properties of parallelograms, squares, rectangles, and rhombus prior to this section. Now we're going to talk about two more quadrilaterals. These are trapezoids and kites. They're different than parallelograms. Like rectangles, rhombus, and squares are parallelograms. Trapezoids and kites are not. So we're going to verify and use properties of trapezoids and kites. It's essential that you understand that the angles, sides, and diagonals of a trapezoid have certain specific properties. Fill in your note template as you go along. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides, so that's what makes it different than a parallelogram. A trapezoid only has one pair of parallel sides. The parallel sides are called the bases. A trapezoid has two pair of base angles. The base angles are the angles that lay along the bases. So P and S are a pair of base angles, and Q and R are a pair of base angles. And then the non-parallel sides of the trapezoid are called the legs. So PQ and RS are the legs. If the legs of the trapezoid are congruent, so in this example, A, B, C, D is a trapezoid. These legs are congruent. We only, remember, have one pair of parallel sides, so I know that this is a trapezoid. And then the legs are congruent. So this is called an isosceles trapezoid. Just like when we had an isosceles triangle that had a pair of congruent legs, it's the same with a trapezoid. And the thing with the isosceles trapezoid is that not only do they have one pair of congruent legs, but also the base angles are congruent. So if angle A is 53, angle B is 53. And then angle D and angle C would be congruent. Because you know AB and DC are parallel lines, then you know that the angles between them, like A and D, those are consecutive interior angles or same side interior angles. So I would know that 180 minus 53 is going to give me 127. So angle D would be 127 and angle C is also 127 because in an isosceles trapezoid, base angles are congruent. If angle A is 53, then angle B is also 53. And again, these are parallel lines, and those are cut by transversals, so those are same side interior angles or consecutive interior angles. Now, the same is not true for this trapezoid up above, this one here. We don't know um, that the base angles are congruent, but we do know, because these are parallel lines cut by transversals, that Q and P are going to be supplementary and R and S would be supplementary. But we just don't know that Q, R, Q and R are con congruent or P and S are congruent. Because it's not an isosceles trapezoid, we wouldn't be able to say that for certain. And again, theorems are rules we can easily prove. We just kind of proved this one. So if a quadrilateral is an isosceles trapezoid, meaning that it has one pair of parallel sides, and a pair of congruent legs, then each pair of base angles is congruent. So TRAP is an isosceles trapezoid with bases RA and TP. Then that means angle T is congruent to angle P and angle R is congruent to angle A. Theorem 620. If a quadrilateral is an isosceles trapezoid, so isosceles, one pair of congruent sides, trapezoid, parallel bases, then the diagonals are congruent. So same property as a rectangle, but is not the same as a rectangle. These diagonals are congruent. So AC is congruent to BD. And then in chapter 5, we discovered properties of mid-segments of triangles. Now, in this section, we're going to talk about properties of mid-segments of trapezoids. The mid-segment of a trapezoid is the segment that joins the midpoints of its legs. So the midpoints of the legs, in this case, if a quadrilateral is a trapezoid, then its mid-segment is parallel to the bases. So here, this is trapezoid... TRAP again, and it's got mid-segment MN. That means that M is the midpoint of RT, 
and N is the midpoint of AP, and so the segment that joins the two midpoints is known as the mid-segment. So this mid-segment is parallel to the bases, and we also know that the length of the mid-segment is half the sum of the length of the bases. So you add the two bases together and divide by two is what you would do here. So if MN is the mid-segment, that means that M cuts RT into two congruent segments and N cuts AP into two congruent segments, then you know that MN is parallel to both bases RA and TP, and you also know that MN is half of the two added together. So that's kind of like the average, right? When you add two things together and divide by two. So let's use some of these properties of isosceles trapezoids that we just discovered. If CDEF is an isosceles trapezoid, let's find the following. You're given here that angle C is 95, we know that this is isosceles, and we also know that it's a trapezoid because it's got one pair of parallel sides. If C is 95, what do you believe D to be? In an isosceles trapezoid, base angles are congruent, so angle D is also going to be 95 degrees. Angle E is between two parallel lines lying on a transversal, right? CD and FE are parallel cut by a transversal. So that means that angle E is a consecutive interior angle with angle D. So if D is 95, then that would make E 85. And again, if this is an isosceles trapezoid, then that means that your base angles are congruent. So if E is 85, then that would mean that F would be 85 degrees. And then we just talked about theorem 6.20, where we said that the diagonals of a trapezoid are congruent. So if we're given here that C to E is a measure of 10, what would F to D be? It would also be 10 units. So we've been doing some work with some coordinate proofs. Here we are going to plot this quadrilateral WXYZ. We want to show that WXYZ is an isosceles trapezoid. So we can do it a couple of different ways. Take a minute to plot these points. So in order to prove that it's an isosceles trapezoid, the first thing that we need to do is we need to prove that exactly one pair of sides is parallel, one pair of opposite sides is parallel. So we can do this by using slope. Parallel lines have the same slope. So in this situation, WX and ZY, what are their slope? Use the slope formula to calculate. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, well, if I say 3 minus 3, I'm going to get 0. And if I say negative 1 minus a negative 1, I'm going to get 0. When 0 is on top, you have a 0 slope. All horizontal lines have a 0 slope. So wx and zy are parallel because they both have 0 slope. They have the same slope. We need to prove that the other pair of sides are not parallel. And in order to prove that they're not parallel and that this is isosceles, we also need to prove that they are congruent. So take a minute and calculate the slopes of WZ and XY. WZ has a positive slope of 2 over 1. XY has a negative slope of negative 2 over 1. So WZ is not parallel to XY. So we just proved that it's a trapezoid because it has exactly one pair of parallel sides. And now in order to prove it's isosceles, we need to prove that the non-parallel pair are congruent to each other using the distance formula. So we can prove that WZ is congruent to XY using the distance formula. The square root of 4 squared plus 2 squared is congruent is equal to the square root of 4 squared plus 2 squared, which is the square root of 20. And simplified, remember that's the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. So actually both of these have a measure of 2 square root of 5. 2 square root of 5. So they are congruent. So proving that one pair 
exactly one pair of sides is parallel and the non-parallel pair are congruent, we can prove that this is an isosceles trapezoid. The mid-segment of a trapezoid is the segment that connects the midpoints of its legs. We already kind of briefly talked about this. So you know that R is the midpoint of WZ because it cuts it into two congruent segments. You know T is the midpoint of XY because it cuts it into two congruent segments. Therefore, RT is the mid-segment of this trapezoid, WXYZ. In order to find the length of the mid-segment, you add the two bases together and divide by 2. So we would say 7 plus 13 divided by 2. 7 plus 13 is 20, and 20 divided by 2 is 10. So RT equals 10. So example three, finding the mid-segment's length of trapezoids. Let's find the value of x. If i is the midpoint of vg and j is the midpoint of fh, then that means ij is the mid-segment. So we need to add the two bases together, 5 plus 9 and divide by 2. 5 plus 9 is 14 divided by 2. That means that this mid-segment is 7. We can also work backwards given the mid-segment. The principle is the same. You add the two bases together and divide by 2 to get the length of the mid-segment. So that means x plus 12 divided by 2 equals 10.5. We want to isolate the variable x. So we want to first get rid of divided by 2. So we would say x plus 12 is equal to 10.5 times 2 is 21. Then we would subtract 12 to get that x is equal to 9. 9 plus 12 is 21, divided by 2 is 10.5. The final quadrilateral that we're going to discuss is the kite. A kite is a quadrilateral that has two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. So consecutive means one right after another. So this is a kite because AB is congruent to BC and CD is congruent to AD. It's essential that you understand the angle sides and diagonals of a kite have certain specific properties. So the consecutive sides are congruent and also angle A is congruent to angle C. It's a quadrilateral so all four angles have a sum of 360. Theorem 622, if a quadrilateral is a kite, then its diagonals are perpendicular, which means they intersect to form a right angle. So ABCD is a kite. Then AC is perpendicular to BD. Therefore, this is a 90 degree angle. So now you have four right triangles in here. And you know that when you have a right triangle, you can find the missing leg or hypotenuse of a right triangle using the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So let's do some examples using the diagonals of a kite. Again, the diagonals are perpendicular to one another if a quadrilateral is a kite. So find the value of x. Well, x is the hypotenuse, pq of that right triangle. So I would say 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to x squared. So 9 and 16 is 25 is x squared. So the square root of 25 is x. So x is equal to 5. Remember that's one of those most famous Pythagorean triples, 3, 4, 5. So now you try the next one. If WXYZ is a kite, then you know the diagonals are perpendicular, therefore forming a right triangle. We want to find the value of X. We're given these two legs. 12 squared plus 20 squared is equal to X squared. Take a minute. See if you can solve this. So 544 is equal to x squared. So the square root of 544 is x. When you're simplifying radicals, you're going to get 16 times 34 is 544. Or if you used your factor trees, you would get two fours in there. Or you would get um, eight twos. So you can pull out a four. And left inside is the square root of 34 because I can't factor on any perfect squares out of there. So x is 4 square root of 34. 
The following quadrilaterals are kites. Let's find the value of x. So remember what I told you a few minutes ago. If a quadrilateral is a kite, then this pair of included angles between the two con congruent sides are going to be congruent to one another. So it's a quadrilateral, it equals 360. So 100 plus 40 plus, if this is x, then this one's also x. So plus 2x equals 360, or 360 minus 140 equals 2x. So 2x is 220, so x is 110. So this is 110, and this one's 110. When I add all four together, I'm going to get 360. Let's look at the second example. We're given two angles here and asked for a third angle, but we don't have this missing angle. If this angle is 135, then the angle across from it is also 135. So, two 135s plus a 55 plus x equals a total of 360. So, 270 plus 55 plus x equals 360. 325 plus x equals 360. So x is equal to 35 degrees. And again, if I substitute in that value and add all four angles, I'm going to get 360. We're going to discover more tomorrow in class regarding trapezoids, isosceles trapezoids, and kites.